Got them, everybody? Well, this virus is uh, effectively managed in a few nations. In a few other nations, It's bursting forth. Unfortunately, United States has crossed hundred thousand confirmed cases with probably twenty-seven hundred deaths. And uh, in the world, the deaths are nearing, or today it's crossed twenty-eight thousand. India, still doing well. There is a lot of apprehension that it may burst forth in the next few days. But mortality rate is, uh, considering the population, it's very good various reasons, some of them we've looked at it. I think one important thing that we need to acknowledge is uh, the government's 
particularly the central government and the state governments together rather, they've done what is called as uh, sealing the district borders. So, wherever infections have happened, the borders of each district which is like a county have been sealed. So because of that, even if it is in the next district, it is not really coming into this one. They kind of localized everything rather than allowing it to spread across the country, which is a, a wonderful way of managing this. And uh, the medical professionals, health workers, they are doing a great job, the security agencies, the forces doing a great job. Army is on standby but not deployed yet, hope they won't be. Certain groups of people not cooperating but largely citizens have cooperated wonderfully well across the nation. But this is only the fourth day, inconveniences, frustrations and struggles will grow by the day. We need to manage that. Well, the only choice we have is that we come out of this as better human beings than what we were before this. Well, So I think today there are lots of questions, let's address the questions. Sadhguru, the first question is from Mark. This is a very challenging time, both physically and emotionally, for healthcare professionals on the front line of coronavirus epidemic. Being fatigued and feeling drained, it is very difficult to know appropriate limits to maintain proper self-care while still continuing to provide the best possible attention to all those in need of our services. Sadhguru, what is your advice for all of us overwhelmed health care workers to keep us going during this crisis? First of all, for all the health care workers, starting with India, now United States, Italy, UK, many other nations where uh, it's flared up. First of all, we bow down to them because they're putting themselves and their families to risk. I want you to imagine a scenario where if healthcare workers, they were not they did not take the job to die. They took the job to serve and to make a living. If it becomes too risky, because in every nation where there are deaths, a significant percentage is healthcare workers. If they say, we don't want to do this, you can imagine the plight of the rest of the population. So Mark, to you and to many others like you who are out there in every nation doing this, we bow down to you. Not only that, now about twenty of our Isha Yoga Center volunteers have come up and we've put them outside from tomorrow. They are going out in the villages assisting the local authorities in identifying and treating these cases. So our volunteers also stepping out to do this, we are choosing young people so that they will be able to withstand this process. In case they get infected, they should be able to come out of it. So we're trying to do our bit, but we are not doing what you're doing, putting yourself and your family and if you have children at home, putting them all to risk. So at a time like this, uh, this is not a time for me to tell you, do this meditation, do that meditation, come and do in engineering, I will not do such things. 
But for doctors and nurses who are working in such conditions in United States to start with, we will offer the inner engineering uh, online free of cost. And, uh, and the app, the Sadhguru app is anyway there in which there are some practices, particularly Isha Kriya and there is Upa Yoga. If you can pick it up and do whatever you can, it'll be good for you. Here for all the local people in the rural areas in Tamil Nadu, we are going to teach them a new, very simple practice, a Kriya, which is very simple. Uh, we will be demonstrating this after some time. You can also look at it and we will send a video for you. This also can be done. One thing is, this will enhance your lung capacity, this will increase or push up the immune capabilities. And above all, the practice that we will demonstrate after some time now. If you start doing it now, Let's say you're able to do it well right now and after five days you're not able to do, you're very sure that you have some lung infection. May not be this virus, but maybe something else. But you have some issue in the lungs that will be very clear. It's almost like a test whether your respiratory apparatus are functioning well or not. That is the nature of the practice. We are mainly doing this in the rural areas, but we will also put it on the national television here. We will put it on the website and wherever else in all the other properties. Please uh, pick this up and do it. But for all doctors and other health workers who are the frontline health workers, who are exposed to possibility of infection voluntarily, for all of you we will offer this in engineering online free of cost. I know this will not compensate for the risk that you're taking. Sadh Sadhguru, the next question is from Alex from Triple IS Tennessee. The latest statistics show that United States now hosts the largest number of coronavirus cases in the world. This has introduced a new level of apprehension amongst us here in the Isha Institute. What can those of us residing here do to best reduce anxiety levels and maintain focus? <laughs> I thought all of you are spiritual seekers <laughs> and you're anxious. Hmm. Well, many times, in many different ways, I have told you, if you just remove one thought from your mind, ninety percent of your spiritual sadhana is done. This one thought is, what about me? You can't get rid of this one stupid thought. Then you will slog for lifetimes and not much will happen. This one thought goes away, sadhana will fly. Sadhana will make you fly. Without removing this, you must understand this. This is like you get into your boat, you tie it to the pier and then row hard. Scenery will change. You will get old and die one day, that'll be one scenery. But uh, incremental changes may happen. Nothing phenomenal will happen in your life because you tied up. What about me, what about me, what about me is a tie-up. Alex, you're a young man, huh? You worried about what will happen and you're anxious? <laughs> you should be stepping out, maybe not right now, if things go totally out of control in the community around us, I will ask you to step out and do what you can do, as they're doing here in India. Well, spiritual seekers, uh, if you're a seeker of any worth, then you should not be bothered about this. But uh, what will happen, what will happen, what if I die? Uh, we don't want you to die, but unfortunately you will die anyway. The only choice you have is either you die for nothing or you die for something.
I prefer to die for something <laughs> So, should I go and sacrifice myself for this one virus? No. You must be cautious. Cautious, being cautious is one thing, becoming fearful and anxious is another thing. Anxiety means, I don't know what practice you've been doing. Above all, if you're doing your practices, even if the virus comes, I would say for every sadhaka, those who are doing their practices properly, even if you get an infection, I'm quite confident you will pass through this effortlessly unless you are... <laughs> unless you are over a certain age group which is vulnerable. I should be worried. You, a young man, is worried about this. Please drop this rubbish because <laughs> I can't believe this <laughs> Anyway, for one hundred people, you got nearly four thousand acres of space. Aren't you worried? Isha Institute of Inner Sciences is nearly four thousand acres, hundred people. UB should put you on the streets of New York City. Yes. <laughs> well, Alex, I'm telling you, in case it so happens in McMinnville or in the local community in any of those towns, if things get really serious and overwhelming for the medical community to handle it, no hospital beds, no nothing, then you're going to vacate your room and there will be virus-infected people staying in your rooms. I want you to know this. This is my commitment to the world. When I said I'm a mother to the world, when I said I'm a mother to the world, I didn't say it just to pass through some stupid program that I did. I meant it and I live it. You also better learn to live it. So anyway, if you have not done any other practice, today we are going to teach a simple practice for the rural people in this area. You can also pick it up and do it also teach it to some medical professionals, all right? And uh, I think we are taking a few decisions about how to run the triple I in the next twenty-four hours to prevent any infection. But at the same time, the young people, below fifty years age of people, you must be ready. Do your sadhana well, keep yourself strong in case outside situation goes totally haywire in the community, I want you to step out and do something useful out there. If it goes absolutely out of control in Tennessee State, we will offer the triple I facility for the government or the medical services to use it. I want you to know that. We've already done that here. We have offered Isha Yoga Center for the state government. Fortunately, it's not going in this direction right now. But in case it goes out of control, yes, we will use the premises for everybody's well-being. And we don't have four thousand acres out here. And we have lots of people. We have four thousand people, <laughs> not acres <laughs> hmm? Is Swami here? Demo Swami. Hmm? You can take another question. Sadhguru, the next question is from Evelyn from Indonesia. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Mm, namaskaram. How can people who are affected by death recover from the trauma and grief of losing family members during this epidemic? How can people affected by death recover? How can they recover from the trauma and grief oh, okay. of losing family members? Okay, okay. Well, 
I am not trying to make light of the situation. <clears throat> situation is of enormous gravity. It's not that I don't understand this. I get this better than anybody and I know more figures than what is in the news. So I understand the gravity of the situation absolutely. But this is what life is about, that situations can become very heavy. But if your mind also becomes very heavy, you are part of the problem now. When situations are heavy, you must be light-hearted, light-headed, doing what you have to do, sensibly. If you also become heavy, you are enhancing the problem. You are not a solution, world will be better without you. This is not what a human being is made to be. We claim, or even scientifically it's proven that you are the peak of evolution at least on this planet. I don't know if you'll pass the test elsewhere, because even here most people are not passing the test. <laughs> but you are the peak of evolution. That means you are the highest level of intelligence, understanding, perception, everything. If you are all this, you must be able to handle life situations well, gracefully, wonderfully. People are not dying only because of this virus. Right now, unfortunately, it's become a wave. It's become a wave. People are dying unnecessarily, that's a problem. Otherwise, every day, nearly a quarter million people are close to that. Maybe 150 to 200,000 people die. Now, unfortunately, extra... What's the number per day, worldwide? Six thousand? Maybe five, six thousand people extra are dying. There is a possibility that this can continue and grow into numbers which are unnecessary. So I want you to understand, death is not new in the world, death is not new to families. I'm not trying to belittle whatever grief you have, but I want you to understand this is what it means. When things go wrong in our lives, will we handle it gracefully or not? This is the most important thing. Otherwise, when everything is well, of course everybody is wonderful, well, there are a lot of idiots, even when things are going well, they are nasty. There is no salvation for them. But when things go dead wrong in our lives, still we are there doing what we have to do. I want you to understand that those people who are consciously putting themselves to risk, that's where our empathy should be, really. Well, it got me, it got you, we either made it or we did not make it, that's a different matter. Yes, when you lose a dear one in your life, it's not a simple thing, because your life gets dislocated, you lost something precious in your life, not easy. But this is the nature of this existence. This is the nature of your existence, that you come and you go. Either you go first or somebody goes first. Unfortunately, they are becoming victims to this spread of this virus, whatever. But we must understand this. Many, many waves of epidemics have happened like this. This time around, it is going everywhere in the world, but in cities, in villages, in countries, 
In the past century, if you look back, there have been plagues, there have been malarias, there have been even influencers which have killed thousands and thousands of people. This one is getting all the publicity because this has an ability to spread rapidly and without respecting national borders or whatever, it's going everywhere. And above all, it is also the level of media and social media we have. So this is getting a lot of publicity. I'm not saying it's not dangerous, it is dangerous. It's unfortunate if you've lost somebody in your life, and many of us may lose somebody in our lives or we may lose ourselves. It's possible if it goes out of control. So now that you know how painful it is, let us do something so that many, many more people need not go through the same pain. When you lose somebody very dear to you, how painful it is. If you know this, one commitment should be, you must ensure this doesn't happen to another person and another person as far as possible. All of it is not in our hands, but we should not... Every citizen has to just take this commitment. I will... I shall not be a carrier. I will not carry this virus and give it to another person. First thing, I will not let it come to me. Just in case it comes to me, I will ensure it doesn't go to another person. This much commitment we must take because there is pain. Pain is not just of somebody dying. The pain is of people losing so many things. People losing somebody who's dear to them is more painful than death, death itself. So we're sorry that you have to go through this. Unfortunately, many, many thousands of people are going through this. Present statistics say every day five to six thousand people, but this number could multiply just like that. It can just burst forth into a hundred thousand a day, it's possible. This is not to create fear and panic, but we must understand what we are confronting. We need to know what we are confronting right here. What we are confronting right here is an unprecedented kind of situation. At least in our generation, we have never faced anything like this. This is the first time such a thing is happening. Whatever comes our way, let's ensure that we handle it gracefully and make sure what happens to us doesn't happen to one more and one more and one more endlessly. Grief is not just a psychological process. If you're very closely connected with another life, grief will be in every cell in your body, it'll hurt in every possible way. Yes, it is like that. That's why we are human. We are human because we can hurt for somebody else's tragedy. Somebody dies and we hurt, this is what makes us human. Suppose somebody dear to us dies and we don't hurt, this is not human, this is inhuman. So, yes it hurts to be human, but that is why it, it is worthwhile being human. So I know I'm not doing anything to bring solace to you, but uh, this is the nature of life. And what's her name? Evelyn? Evelyn, wherever you are, whoever it is that you lost, if you can send the latest picture of that person, we will see what we can do. And your picture also, we will see what we can do. I know this is a crazy thing I'm taking up, but uh, because now we may be flooded with thousands and thousands of this, but uh, because you asked, as I said, if somebody is hurting, if it doesn't hurt you at all, that means you've forsaken your humanity. It's out of that I'm saying this. Hmm? This one. So this is a simple practice, this is not uh, relevant to people who are doing Shakti Chalana Kriya. 
it's not necessary to do this. Uh, but it could be done if you're doing Shakti Lachalana Kriya in the morning, in the evening, you can do it or in the afternoon if you're hungry enough, you can do it. Otherwise, for those of you who do not know any other powerful process, this will help. One thing is, it will enhance your lung capacity. Another thing is, it'll enhance your immunity. And above all, if you can do it today, if you can do it for next five days, and suddenly one day you're not able to do it, this means definitely you've got some respiratory problem. It may not be this particular virus, but it could be anything else. It doesn't matter what it is, you must have yourself checked if you suddenly find you're not able to do it. What it involves is that you have to fully stretch your tongue out with your mouth fully open and then breathe as powerfully as possible without jerking the abdomen, but powerful pushing in and pushing out, both inhalation, exhalation, twenty-one times. And when it is done, you roll up your tongue upward, Push it as further back as you can, you don't have to use your hands, it's not a good time to use your hands. <laughs> so roll up your tongue fully as much as you can by yourself like... And still with your mouth open, again breathe the same way, inhalation, exhalation as powerfully as possible, but you must get the sound by making a constriction in your throat like this. The sound must be there, it's important that you make... form a constriction at the throat level... at the pit of your throat and make the sound and inhalation, exhalation, fully exhaling, fully inhaling, as powerfully as you can, but without jerking the abdomen, another twenty-one times with the tongue rolled up. After this is done, you close your eyes and inhale... I'm sorry, throughout the whole process you have your eyes closed, you inhale fully. You inhale fully and simply sit there with the fullness of breath for one minute. If you are beyond a certain age or your breathing is not that good, at least thirty seconds. If you're not able to do one minute, a minimum of thirty seconds you stay there. When the day you're not able to do it, you must understand that there is some problem with your respiratory system and you must go for a checkup. Swami will demonstrate. Microphone. One second, Swami. Swami, Swami. Can we set up a microphone? If we keep it there, will it pick it up? So what's being done is uh, you... one has to sit in a cross-legged posture, whichever way you can, whatever your body permits, and then use both the arms to push it up in such a way that your ribcage lifts off the diaphragm region. 
fully pushed up and now extend your tongue fully out. Like this twenty-one times, when it's done, then close your mouth, that also twenty-one times, then close your mouth. You exhale with your mouth closed, making the sound at the pit of your throat by creating a constriction. And then if you wish to sit quietly for some time with your eyes closed, do that. And then you can do whatever you're doing. This is a simple practice that anybody could do. You ensure your stomach is not too full, you must be somewhat hungry. Even if you're not totally empty stomach, at least you must be somewhat hungry kind of situation. Uh, hmm? So, uh, this is a simple practice, particularly those of you who are exposed either because you are medical personnel or you're police or you're in some other service where you're exposed to infected people. Please make sure you do this, this will make a lot of difference for you. <clears throat> because.